pretty, that's pretty good odds. I'm just gonna hey everyone, this. and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. So today we're going to have a fabulous culinary demo all the way from, I believe it's Australia. It's really far. It's really early in the morning there. We're not going to just be showing you how to make samosas or how to make oil-free samosas or oil-free vegan samosas. You're going to learn how to make crispy gluten-free, oil-free, vegan samosas from the YouTube sensation, Divya Singh. Welcome. I can't wait to see this recipe. Hi, AJ. Lovely to meet you. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Well, you're so welcome because people have been requesting you for a long time. And anytime oh, there's wow. Indian food, people <laughs> go nuts. People love Indian food, but the problem for many people is it's generally uses a lot of oil. Absolutely. And I found the same when I was making the transition. I honestly never thought I would see samosas again in my diet. Uh, so we can be a little bit creative, which uh, I have done after much experimentation. And I think I've come up with a, a recipe that uh, hopefully your viewers would love. I know we are. I just, samosas are so good, but they are you know, they're not something that people eat a lot if they're really watching their, their weight or their health because of all the oil. Absolutely, absolutely. And and you're right. I think when I was eating the standard samosa, you'd, you'd stop at one and, and often you'd feel quite horrible. But with these, you can just go one after the other and have a whole plate of samosas if you like. And it's, it's just fantastic. I'm, you know, I know people that eat oil, they, they don't, whether they think it's healthy or not, they don't understand, like, it, it's so great when you don't, because like, you, you feel better, you really do, your skin is better, and you get to eat just so much more food. Oh, it is. It's so true. And I think I probably, I could easily, easily say that I almost eat twice as much as I used to. Um, and, and often family members are just so surprised at how many sort of potatoes and rice and carbohydrates that I can, I can eat. And it, it's great. And, and even after eating all that food, you still feel great. You still feel light. Yeah. You don't, you don't get like you do on Thanksgiving when you overeat, even if you do overeat on, on this kind of food and Indian yeah. food with, I mean, with the emphasis on the, you know, with the ingredients that are in Indian food, things like cauliflower and peas and potatoes with all the spices, it just lends itself so well to this kind of cooking. It really does. It really does. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to see what you have for us. And also anytime you want to just interject a little bit of your story, why you eat this way. I mean, I've, I've read your story, but I'm, there might be people unfamiliar with why you eat this way all the way in Australia. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So I will start getting my uh, pot ready. So I'm using an electric fry pan just to, uh, to kickstart a few things with the spices. That's what makes Indian food, Indian food. Yes, absolutely. The range of spices, which is very exciting. I think that's what people love about it the most. Okay. So just before I get onto the spices, I'll just let you know that I have pre-prepared some boiled potatoes. And so they're just chopped up into nice pieces. And uh, when it comes to making the actual mix, I'll uh, mash some of it, but there will still be a bit of texture in there as well. Um, so right now I'm just popping my electric fry pan on and I'm just going to uh, heat up the spices. So um, just toast them a little bit. And yeah, so in terms of my story, uh, so we have a, a common connection we just found out before, which is exciting. Uh, so my story starts about eight years ago, or just over eight years ago. Um, I had quite a bit of digestive discomfort and it's something that I just became so used to and I just lived with and I just thought it was kind of normal and that most people experience that. Uh, and then it just, just over eight years ago, it just got a lot worse uh, to the extent where I was at work. Well, at, a couple of times I was at work and just started feeling very faint um, and extreme, extreme pain uh, on the side of my stomach. And, uh, and then looked into it, investigated all the options uh, and went for tests, uh, but it was non-conclusive. But fortunately, uh, in some ways, around, around that time, 
my brother-in-law was in Japan and he was going on a journey of his own and uh, he was diagnosed with colitis while he was there. And so I'm just going to pop in uh, some cumin. Yeah, well, yeah he tells his story yeah. in the GI Health Summer, Summit. That's brother. right, yes. Um, and uh, we would uh, communicate often over Messenger um, at the time. Uh, and and uh, things started to get a lot worse for him while he was there. And, uh, you know, basically, uh, ironically enough, as he entered the hospital, it started to get worse. And then um, we, we went over there and my husband and I went to Japan. We went to Sendai. And, and uh, then he was, still, uh, he was still quite bad at that stage, and, but he wasn't at his worst. And so uh, when we returned, um, my mother-in-law had looked at some uh, information online and come across this amazing book by David Klein, uh, Healing uh, Colitis and Crohn's. And so uh, basically started implementing some of the, the protocols in the book. And he started noticing a major difference in the way he felt. It was, it was quite a, a miraculous thing, having gone from something so uh, almost a vegetative state to something like having life again. And so uh, in the conversations that we've had, we have and the experience that he had, I just thought I'll, I'll try it myself and just see how I'd feel. And I felt so much better just with the, even the removal of dairy. And I, it, it was such an eye-opening experience that dairy could have such a destructive effect on the body. And so um, I'll just pop in, I'm just going to pop in some curry leaves. So once the, so the uh, dry spices are toasted nicely, I'm just going to add the curry leaves now. Um, yeah, so then when I tried it and uh, I felt so amazing, I just thought, look, I'm going to keep going with this. And then I started removing, uh, so dairy was first to go, then poultry and red meat and then seafood uh, or seed creatures were the last, last to go. And it was, it was wonderful. And uh, the, the really great thing was that around, uh, as I was sort of transitioning, we happened to go on a family holiday to New Zealand. And my husband, who was eating sort of the standard Western diet at that point, said, look, you know, I'm going to support my brother. I'm going to try it for a week. And uh, within that week, he changed his mind on food altogether as well. So in that week, he stopped eating uh, all meat, dairy, stopped drinking coffee, stopped drinking alcohol. And so it was very nice to be able to share that experience and not, not think, oh, you're going you're gonna to eat this and I'm going to eat that. So we just we did it together. And when we came back, uh, that was just the way we lived. And in fact... Uh, we uh, decided that we would um, have a lot more raw foods in our diet. So we, we had uh, from the breakfast and lunch. Uh, and, and in fact, we, we do still to this day uh, start off with, with uh, fruit in the morning and then uh, fruit in, in the afternoon as well and sometimes some green leafy vegetables. And then in the evening, we'll have our high-carb, uh, low-fat dinner. Yeah, it's amazing. So, and it's that, a bit tricky. You can't really see. I just tilt it up a little bit. It just looks beautifully, beautifully brown and toasted. Um, and if you had smell of vision, then you could smell how I just love the fragrance of, of curry leaves in particular when the when they're nice and toasted and, and all the flavor releases. It's just wonderful. I love that skillet that you have. It looks like it really can yeah. hold a lot. Yes. I've had it for a wee while actually, and I, I, I haven't used it in I think about seven years or so. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to, to pull it out and it still works really well. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's mobile. Um, it's something that you, know, you, can, you can grill on easily and, uh, and, and the capacity is quite, quite large, which is good and useful. Yeah, so um, after we've got the um, whole spices toasted and then we've got the curry leaves in there that have just had a little toast. And then I am going to... Just chop up some onion in there as well. Just give it a rough chop. When did you decide to start your YouTube channel? 
I decided to give that a go uh, probably about, I'd say about four years ago was my first video. Uh, in, in terms of creating uh, content that I was really passionate about, I, I'd say probably about two, two years ago, two and a half years ago. And um, it's, it's been fantastic. It's, it's such an interesting experience, kind of just putting yourself out there um, I've, I've not only I've done recipes, but also um, videos on gentle parenting and things that are really important to me in my life. And uh, it's, it's great. And having that platform to share and, and knowing that you're connecting with people, there's just so many wonderful people that have reached out. And um, it's, been, it's been a lovely experience engaging with sort of the international community. And recipes have just kind of... Um, put that to a, the next level, I guess, because food is something that is just so universal and people, people just love food and I certainly do myself. And uh, when there's a recipe that, uh, you know, especially that I'm proud of, I find that um, it gets a lot of reach, gets a lot of interest. And um, this, is, this is something that I've been kind of filing away and just saving for a, a special occasion. So thank you for for giving me a special occasion by being on your show. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's, this one's a, a quite a, in, in terms of the creative process and getting to where I got to, this, this makes it even more special. So um, is it any more difficult to make a healthy samosa than a traditional one? Good question. I'd say, uh, it, I'd say this version in particular is a lot easier because you've got, the filling, um, um, the same process would apply to both. So you're, you know, you're looking at uh, cooking out the spices and the, the vegetable components and then combining them together. Uh, but with the traditional variety, you've got to make the dough, you've got to, um, you know, roll it out, cut them into shapes, and then uh, cut them into sort of semicircles rather, and then uh, fill them and then fry them. So whereas the second part of the process is um, a rice paper, of course, that's my, that's my uh, hack, I suppose you could say. Uh, that requires no kneading or rolling out or um, anything like that. And then you simply, rather than putting it in a fryer, sort of one by one or however you do it, uh, you pop it into the oven. So I, I cook, um, when I make a big batch, I'm making about sort of 30, over 30 at a time. And so, of course, that is a it's a lot quicker when you're just popping them into the oven. Uh, um, so next, I'm just gonna pop these onions in. So what is your favorite sort of Indian street food? Oh, oh my gosh. I, you know what it is about Indian food that I love is, is the chutneys that go with it. So it almost doesn't matter what yeah. you give me. When you give me a delicious chutney, then everything tastes good. You know, it's all about mm -hmm. the sauce. That's so true. I think we, we're really fortunate in that you, you're never short on a variety of, variety of chutneys. Uh, and, and even uh, fortunately with, with oil-free cooking as well, you still get all those wonderful chutneys. And, um, and in fact, I've got another, um, I've got a recipe on my website and channel for a tamarind and date chutney, which works beautifully with this. And uh, it's just very... It's got that sort of undertone of earthy spices and the sweetness and the sour, sour note from tamarind as well. Tamarind and it, and it kind of tamarind is fantastic. Yeah. What 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 do you what kind of what kind of things do you eat for breakfast? Uh, so we we tend to keep it fairly similar most days. Uh, uh, at the moment, actually, we have got watermelon. That's just come, come into season here. Uh, so we'll have like a watermelon blend um, and then often followed by uh, after a wee break, having a, a nice big smoothie with frozen berries and um, some kale and some, some uh, mango as well. So just, and even though we, I was just thinking about it the other day, even though we have smoothies practically every day, we have different additional ingredients, which make it a, a new and more interesting flavor. So you can combine lots of different fruits. But 
that that is our our breakfast and at the, for sort of lunch we tend to have something very similar and uh it's it's really um after after coming across uh Doug Graham's 80 10 10 book which we we um refer to a lot particularly in the early days and it just became a habit sort of his recommendations introducing lots of raw food just makes you feel lighter and I, I do notice when occasionally I'll have something cooked for, for lunch, I just don't feel the same. I, I feel like I could, I could have a nap, you know, in the middle of the day. Um, so it's, yeah, raw food for, for us uh, in the daytime is definitely the way we go. So the, the thing that you're cooking on, is that a non-stick surface or what, what is it? This, this is a non-stick surface. And uh, so all, um, now the reason why I'm using this for this demonstration is obviously the, the space and the light. But we tend to use uh, non-stick pans in any case. And this is an example of something that we use, the one where we've got the potatoes. Uh, and, and so, yep, definitely both. And with the... Uh, with this one in particular, which I do, um, we've got a whole range with the, the same sort of surface. It's, it's really lovely to kind of caramelize, deeply caramelize your food and then have the sizzle of putting you know, water and having all the caramelized flavors uplift. Um, and I mean, literally being able to sort of uh, sear tofu, um, that's, that's been really good with this. Um, it's, uh, it is a nice surface. And um, I'm just going to mix thing that I'll do, Chef AJ, is I'm going to just chop up some, um, some cauliflowers. And this cauliflower uh, has I've done a fair bit already, but it's basically just kind of shaving, shaving it a little bit, making it nice and thin and small. So it uh, evenly distributes throughout the dish and cooks um, it's a sort of melty pieces as well when it combines with the potato. I'm just going to do, and when, uh, in terms of sort of my background, uh, I'm of Fiji Indian descent, and there's what's really common in, in the culture is a lot of communal cooking. So if there's a wedding, there's like a, a birthday party or you know, even, even funerals, of course, we, the family and, and friends get together and they, they cook together. And um, it's, uh, and I'm just, I was just thinking about the way, how, how the way I use my knife is something that I've often seen at those family functions. You kind of, you don't really use a board so much. You kind of just, you grab the vegetable and as you're um, helping prepare for the large feast, you're just sort of slicing away, whether it's sort of, okra for um, you know bindi um, uh, stir fries or whatever it might be so uh, I'm just going to pop this all in there and I think I'll leave some of that off yeah you know if, if you're used to doing it it's okay but it's it, for somebody that's never done it I wouldn't it's not so safe it, you know <laughs> I agree I agree yeah. I, and I even I remember saying that in, in um, when I first uh put the video together because it is such an awkward thing if you if you have no idea how to to how to hold your knife correctly and I and it only works with with a, a short a small knife rather so you don't want to be attempting it with a, a huge sharp knife that would not be safe at all so I'm just going to pop the uh, cauliflower in there you know we have an Aussie watching named Mandy and she wanted to know where in Australia are you I'm in Melbourne nice Hi, Mandy <laughs> I mean, there's yeah, a few. So. There's a few vegans in Australia. There's uh, Spudfit, Andrew Taylor. There's He's lovely. Yes, we're friends with Spudfit. There's Sandy yeah. Pluis. I'm not sure how close everybody lives to each other. Yes. Uh, sorry, who was it? Who was um, it? Her, she has a, a blog, Vegans uh, Cook Yummy Food. She's the one that invented the oh. first potato waffle. Her name is Sandy Pluis. She's wow. been on the show. I'm not sure where in Australia she lives. Okay, I'm going to check her out. Yeah. Yep. Oh, Susan says, if a recipe calls for a quarter teaspoon cumin seeds, how much cumin powder would you substitute? And can you even substitute powder for seeds? 
That's a good question. I, I typically wouldn't. Um, I, I find that uh, for recipes, the whole spices actually have a different sort of depth of flavor. And when you're using sort of the powdered spices, they, they tend to be a bit diluted in the flavor um, intensity. So I, I wouldn't personally, if a uh, recipe calls for ground spice, I wouldn't um, make, uh, alternate. Uh, so if you can, if you can get a hold of whole spices, I certainly would. Yep. Do you use one of those things that a lot of the Indian chefs and cooks use? They're like silver and they have everything in their own little place. I, won't, I don't myself, but my mom has that. And, uh, and it's, it's quite lovely. It's a nice, nice uh, place to keep all your spices. But I find it even with uh, my mom's place as well. It's just when you're reaching for a particular spice, you kind of tend to mix them up together sometimes. So um, you will find the odd mustard seed and your cumin seed and everything like that. Um, so I, I just, I literally have um, sort of little containers of spices and, and, uh, and I tend to, um, I find that um, I, because I use so many different spices all the time, I need quite decent large containers because I'm, I'm using a fair bit of spice. Uh, so small containers don't really work for, the amount of cooking that I, I do. Yeah. I recently had an Indian chef, Harshdeep Swami, on the show, and he used one I of those things. It. And nothing yeah. was labeled. And I'm like, but how do you know what's what? You know? <laughs> yes. And, and yeah, it's, it's true. Uh, what you find is that um, there's a, a slightly different tone of um, sort of beige or brown or yellow. And you kind of, you just have a kind of a memory of where you put the spice. And um, Sometimes I've it just you just have to smell it to, to kind of realize that oh actually that's the that's the cumin powder and not the coriander powder. Yep. There's a question <laughs> if if you use ever use canned beans like chickpeas in a can. I do um, good question and I do for convenience. I um I do when I'm um, sort of short on time. Absolutely. Try and find the variety that. Um, is low on salt as well because often is the case with the canned um, legumes they there's a lot of hidden salt but most of the time I do try and pressure cook a large batch so I'll probably and I, I do a, a lot of batch cooking so I'll make a kg of chickpeas at a time just just cook them until they're tender then I'll freeze them into boxes and then, um, you know, if I'm, if I'm making curry or a stew, then I'll pop out a box and that kind of works for me. Do you have one of those cool stackable things that I've seen Indian people use? I love them yes. with the different courses and different stacks. They're so beautiful. Yes, uh, tiffins, I do have one. Um, sort of popped it away because I haven't used them in a wee while, but uh, they are really lovely. And it's, it's, it makes um, the meal experience really exciting. Because yeah, you never know what's going to be in the next layer. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it'd be wonderful. Okay, and then, so my my cauliflower is looking slightly softer. I'm just going to put in some spices now. Um, oh, actually, yes. So I've got my turmeric. My ground uh, cumin, my garam masala. I'm also going to put in some minced ginger and minced garlic. What's the plant may seem like in, in Melbourne where you live? The plant they seen, it's there, there is a really good community here, I have to say. And uh, you kind of, um, when, when there's an opportunity to get together, it hasn't been for a wee while. I don't know whether you're aware, but we've been in uh, lockdown for an extended period of time. Um, so when, when there is an opportunity, it's really great to, to kind of have those gatherings and meet up. But I, I just, 
I think we, we're very lucky in terms of the variety of foods that are available in Australia. Much like America, you know, we've got um, tropical varieties of foods that are grown up north. Um, and so we have that all year round and uh, just a range of, range of fruits. And I, I think about when we lived in New Zealand, and I love, I love New Zealand. It's such a wonderful place to grow up. We didn't quite have the same variety of fruits and vegetables because obviously it's a much colder climate. But here we, we do, which is exciting. And, uh, and now even in terms of restaurants as well, there's um, uh, pre, pre-lockdown, there perhaps were, were more uh, restaurants. But just they're becoming very popular and, and not just amongst the vegan community. Uh, I've got friends and family that, that aren't vegan but still love going to the vegan restaurants and trying all the plant-based options. Uh, which is really exciting. So we, uh, we have um, probably, I'd have to say it's one of my favourite places, but it's, it's just down in Alstonwick, which is a suburb close to where we live. And they, uh, it's called Rendow. And they are very accommodating with regards to sort of oil-free cooking, uh, oil-free options. And that's, that's great. So, you know, they'll sometimes try some of the recipes without, um, without oil for us. But I think overall, it's, it's a really lovely, exciting place to be in, in Melbourne. And uh, yeah, and great, great uh, community of, of uh, plant-based uh, people, yeah. Just pop some water in there to, just to lift all of the caramelized pieces at the bottom. That's my I, love that. part. I, I love that sound because then I know the onions are getting nice and caramelized. Absolutely. And a little bit of salt to taste. Now, Chef AJ, in terms of salt for yourself, um, you know, people I've think seen, like I'm like, I, I, I don't use salt because I'm so perfect. And it's not the case at all, because I have some products with salt. I grew up in a home where my parents were almost in their 50s. When I was born, I was an accident and they already had heart disease and heart attacks. And I just they didn't use salt. And none of my relatives use salt. And I never developed oh. a taste for salt. And when you don't that have something. Excellent. Yeah, you just don't, you don't like it. So, I mean, I, I don't have any, I'm not like morally opposed to salt, but I do know that for people that are really, really struggling with their weight, it can really be an appetite stimulant, but I, I don't have a problem. That's why I let people use salt on this show. I just don't personally, I, I like other spices better. What can I tell you? No, that's that, absolutely, it's fair enough. And I think in terms of salt, um, salt-free alternatives, they're becoming more common and, um, I've tried to get a hold of, uh, you made this um, beautiful parmesan uh, sprinkle that, uh, and you recommended a salt-free alternative, which I'm just, I'm trying to get it my hands on. Yeah, but um, I, I wish I could send it to you. Ben, Benson's Table Tasty is one, and now yes. Dylan Holmes has quite a few of uh, salt-free blends. The other problem is I'm allergic to black pepper, and so a lot of the yes, salt-free blends right. rely on pepper. So my favorite, is my, do you ever use paprika in Indian cooking? That's my favorite spice. Um, I, I tend to use it in sort of other, other dishes, but I, I love it too. It's, um, especially the, the sweet variety. You can see lovely steam coming out. But uh, the steam, uh, sweet variety rather, is, is my personal favorite. So I do, do enjoy it. So that's, that's your favorite spice? I love smoked paprika. I really do. Ah. Fantastic. Yeah, I, I think um, we we try and uh, reduce salt where where possible because I mean it's it's certainly not healthy to have a lot of salt and that's uh, that's another tricky thing with Indian food when you when you do go to restaurants uh, besides the oil is the the amount of salt and it's um uh, and and pickles as well that's the the primary ingredient uh, but we when we initially went plant-based, did a number of raw days and uh, weeks of salt-free days. And when, when we introduced salt back in, you only, you're right, you only need the, the smallest amount to, to have that, that full flavor. Uh, 
Whereas if you're having it every day, then you kind of need to almost need to build it up a little bit and, and have more every day. So All right. the, oh, what was I going to say? I've completely lost my train of thought because I was watching the chat and some of the questions that are in that. Um, it was, let's see. Yes, I did. People want to know about the recipe and you made another wonderful video that I really encourage them to watch because it's a straight through. And I posted that in the show notes, which are underneath the YouTube description with the link to the recipe. Great. Thank you so much. My pleasure. So now I'm just going to place in the potatoes. If you don't see the, the recipe in the YouTube show notes, sometimes you have to refresh, but it's there, I swear. I just put them there myself. Okay, and I'm gonna place in the peas. So these are just frozen peas, defrosted. I'm looking at your Instagram page and I don't know what's more beautiful, the kids or the food. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. You got something there that looks like a donut. I don't know what it is, but it sure looks like a donut with orange marmalade on it. Let me tell you. Yes, that's right. That's um, orange spice cake. That's um, one that I loved experimenting with, especially coming up with that glaze, which makes it look beautiful, but tastes decadent as well yeah that looks incredible and while I'm, I'm mixing the ingredients I'm just kind of giving it a, a bit of a mash with my wooden spoon just to make it a little bit uh, more cohesive Is there a lot of uh, junk food in India, like in the United States? Like, do you have 7-Eleven, for example? I mean, I know you're not in India, but do you do you hear about that? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. I think when when we um, when I first went to India with my my husband, um, I think I was quite surprised at how popular McDonald's was um, and and other sort of fast food chains as well. They've got their own as well, <clears throat> but it's just becoming I think Western food in general is becoming really popular. Um, but they, yeah, that's it's just you kind of see it everywhere, really. Um, and but in saying that, we found that a lot of the family members still prefer to have home cooking, which I found really interesting. Um, so it's one of um, Shoko's cousins in particular, he he still likes the traditional, uh, the vegetables and the rotis, and he'll look forward to that. And often when he goes out, rather than kind of going for those options, he'll uh, have a tiffin, tiffin packed and, and ready to go. But yeah, it just, it just depends. And I think probably the, the younger population, I think, because it's just, you know, junk food and fast food is supposed to is seen to be kind of hip and cool and what everyone's doing. You know, everyone has a Pepsi, everyone has a Coke. And, um, but I think if you, if you develop a taste for, for good home cooking and healthy food from a young age, that's what you sort of naturally prefer. And, uh, and even I, found, I find with my kids, so my, my youngest Darian, he's, he's – um, eating mostly raw and on, on breast milk, of course, as well. He's, so he's one year old. And my eldest, Alia, they just surprise me as to how simple they prefer their foods. They'll, um, sometimes they'll say, should I make this for you? Should I make that for you? And they'll just say, well, Alia will say to me, I just want a banana. So she'll, she'll happily eat a couple of bananas rather than something really complicated. That so is so uh, cool. That is, that is, that's adorable. And that's amazing. And it just shows that kids will eat healthy food if that's what they're given. Definitely. And what's what they, they see as well in terms of our preferences. We've, we've developed a taste for all of those 
all of those flavors and ingredients. Um, but yeah, it always always makes me smile when when um, Ali will say to me, "No, that's I just want this." She does like the other uh, recipe that I make as well. She's my she's my hardest, harshest critic. And in fact, she might um, she's still asleep right now, but um, she might just pop by and, and say hi to you um, a wee bit later on. But uh, it's yeah, it's it's quite fantastic. And I I think um, in terms of uh, you mentioned my Instagram, Chef AJ. I've uh, my my kids inspire uh, everything really, and in, in, in the creativity around cooking as well, they they're a huge inspiration. And, and as my daughter gets older, she she's getting more and more involved in in the recipes. And uh, now she's she even films some of my recipes. So she'll say. Uh, in, in preparation for, for meeting you and coming on your show, she'd, I'd have to talk through everything. So I'd be making a smoothie and, and she'd say, Mommy, what are you doing? Can you t- tell me what you're doing? And people want to know what you're doing. And um, so she's kind of been practicing with me to, to work and talk at the same time, which is not something that I often, often sort of naturally do. But uh, no, she's, she's great. And, and uh this is another this recipe is a, a great favorite of hers as well maybe she'll start filming videos soon i think she will i really do all right so i'm just gonna put this in what do you think it was in your previous diet that was causing most of your digestive upsets do you think it was the gluten the dairy uh, that, Both. That's a good question. I'd say the dairy, because I, I felt like, uh, I mean, now looking back at at uh, some of the dishes that I would eat in particular, I was quite fond of baking. So um, baked goods and and the place that I worked, so many of the uh, meetings and, and um, gatherings that we had were catered. And often on that menu would be scones and jam. And uh, so really rich and um buttery muffins and and I, I was fond of all that but uh, really it didn't do me any favors and I'd find that immediately after I just had that um, a discomfort. In terms of wheat I found that I've, uh, I'm mostly gluten-free. Uh, I was completely gluten-free for about two years and that's uh, because of my daughter who had a sensitivity to, to gluten uh, through through the breast milk in fact. And we, when we realized that was the cause, I, I immediately stopped. And I found that in, in stopping for her, it was a great favor to myself as well, because then I realized actually gluten is uh, causing a, a lot of discomfort as well, even, um, even of, of course, after being plant-based. And, and especially now nowadays where wheat is so highly processed and um, it's, it's probably quite far from what it was um, in the original state. And uh, so having, um, being mostly gluten-free now, it's, it's a wonderful thing. And now there are so many gluten-free options available of ingredients. And um, if you want to have gluten-free bread, that's available as well. But yeah, I'd, I'd say to answer your question, definitely dairy was the, the, the main um, irritant for me. Yep. Yet in, in Indian culture, dairy is almost revered, you know? It is, absolutely. It's, um, it is, in, in things and dishes that perhaps people wouldn't even expect. Uh, and and when, when it comes to um, special functions, then the quantity of dairy that's added is even more. It's, it's amazing to kind of enrich dishes and everything like that. Um, but, uh, and, and certainly when we went to India the first time, so uh, prior to being plant-based, um, I, I developed a fondness at that point for paneer, which is uh, Indian cottage cheese. And, and it's something that is, is if, if you're going to be vegetarian, then often is the case that you're consuming uh, lot, lots of dairy in, in the form of cheese and, and, it's um, it's almost uh, a strange question to ask when when you're 
requesting a vegetarian dish to be without dairy because it's um, it's almost uh, the reaction you get is almost like then one what are you going to have if you're not going to have this um, you know, couldn't almost anything be a samosa, meaning not, not anything, but like it's, you have this filling and it, right. It, it, you could do that with other dishes. As in, uh, change the, the filling. Yeah. Like, oh, like course, a, yeah. other dishes that you might make Indian food and just, it doesn't have to be one particular type of filling. Exactly right. Yeah. You can certainly be very creative with it. And, uh, and with so this is the the filling here is is quite sort of a traditional recipe but you're absolutely right i um sometimes i'll make you know an eggplant curry or um something a, a stir fry potato dish with lots of peppers so red peppers and that's really lovely and, and so it's effectively what we what's common here in melbourne in australia and i suppose new zealand as well as pies people are really fond of pies and with with a pie you can have every possible filling that you can think of so if you um and this is kind of an indian version of a pie really it's it's filling um encased in, in dough and, and pastry so if you feel like yeah, if you feel like tofu perhaps that would work really well as well well i was just thinking like if people want a lot of variety they can make whatever the filling is and have that one night for dinner like over rice and then leftovers turn them into samosas absolutely yeah i think that would be a great idea for sure and it makes it uh almost like a a travel meal you can hold a samosa in the car or you know have a nice picnic with a samosa so it makes it really convenient for sure it's just fun dipping them into some type of green chutney, preferably one that has mint or something in it. And uh, do, do you like chili yourself? I do. I, li I, I like moderately spicy. I don't like super spicy, but moderately spicy. I do like. Yes. And I, I think um, in terms of spices, well, if, uh, if, if one is um, really enjoys chili, then often is the case. You will find lots of recipes with chili, Indian recipes with chili. I think um, it was very strange. We, I, I dislike chili and spicy food um, immensely. But then when I got pregnant, I that's I craved it so much. And now, now I try. I it, it's just something that I really enjoy, and I'll, I'll I do prefer having fresh chilies. I think because fresh chilies have a a flavour, and they won't have it too intense. So I will remove the seeds most of the time. But uh, chilies just nowadays with the change, I, I am enjoying them for sure. I'm just squeezing some lemon juice over the top. And that there is good to go. So I'm just going to I'll just show you. You can see see the filling there. Yeah, I mean that I could eat just the filling. Yes, and we do too. <laughs> So I'm just going to pop that aside. And the next thing that I'll need to do is prepare the rice paper for, so that's the casing. I've got some, some filling that is already cool. And you do need to ensure that the filling is cool before you start putting together the, the samosas. And in terms of uh, preparing in advance, you can certainly do this in advance. Um, I've, I did this uh, yesterday, but uh, it, um, especially if you're kind of rushed for time, you can do that and uh, then it makes the assembly process really easy as well. So now I'm just
just notice those herbs on the herbs. table. Ah, yes. Yes, so that's a bit of coriander. So got that at the, at the local market. So we, we are getting uh, uh, food deliveries, which is really great, just while um, things are in, in lockdown. And it's, it's quite a different experience um, in the States, isn't it? Because it's, you've not really gone, had uh, too much in terms of lockdown on, on your side. So you're based in LA, is it? I'm near Palm Springs now. Three years ago, I moved oh. out of LA. Yes. Have, have you um, at all, through sort of the COVID-19 um, epidemic, have you experienced much lockdown on your side? Just at the very beginning. That was like a year and a half ago. Yeah. But it's pretty open now. That's good. That's good. The, um, my, my son was actually uh, born in lockdown. He uh, was born at home. Uh, and in a sort of a beautiful birth that we were intending to go to the hospital, didn't quite, quite make it there. But uh, so he, he was born on my daughter's birthday. Uh, That's very convenient. Uh, that was very convenient, yes. That's a nice present for her. Yes, and, and she, she certainly was very, um, she was adamant that he was going to come on her birthday. And uh, so was not at all surprised when he, when he did, when he was born on, on her birthday. Uh, but yes, yeah, so he was born in, in lockdown. And we've worked out a clear majority of his life. Uh, we've kind of, we've had uh, a lockdown experience here. So I think it's just, just having, um, uh, peace with whatever is happening and the experience and 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 uh, everything happens for a reason. So we're just kind of working through it. But um, I think it's it's certainly uh, I think personally brought out the the best of humans and how kind and and thoughtful they are in terms of reaching out to people that perhaps are uh, might not be doing so well. And yeah, I, I think it's it's. Um, Put out the best in people, definitely. Um, Divya, Lenny wants to know, do you make your own gar garam masala? Ah, good question. I, I don't, personally. I um, We've got a wonderful spice shop that's close to us that has wonderful, fragrant garam masala, but you certainly could yourself. And it's just a matter of you know, toasting a whole lot of sort of warming spices. Uh, so cinnamon, cardamom, pepper, um, cloves, uh, just a, and, and you can make it according to your preference as well. And so for yourself, uh, Chef AJ, you'd remove the pepper, of course, and just, yeah, so it's, it's, it is lovely. And if you've got um, a coffee grinder, it's fantastic. So I wouldn't suggest that you use it for anything other than spices once you start using it for grinding spices because the spices are very potent, but they're, they're wonderful for, for grinding up spices. So I've just too. they they can uh, vary widely. They they can taste different. They can absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can buy two different companies. You know, I mean, in the states, McCormick and I don't know one of the others, and totally different taste. Yes, that's right. So Lanny wants to know what beverages do you drink? Oh, that's a good question. I, I'm a bit boring in that respect because I I drink a lot of water. Um, and, and water, sometimes with uh, freshly squeezed lemon. Uh, I don't uh, have caffeinated beverages, but I, I might have sort of um, mint tea, fresh mint tea, uh, chamomile tea as well. In, in the warmer months, in the sort of cooler months rather, I prefer having sort of hot drinks. I find it very comforting. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's what, I'm, what I'm drinking at the moment. Now, I, I'm going to just show you what I did here because it, it happens rather quickly. So this is the larger size rice paper. And you can make the samosas according to, you know, if you want to make a meal size, I'd go for the larger um, uh, diameter. And then you've got the smaller size. So if you want to make cocktail samosas, then certainly that's a, it's a good idea. Just 
cocktail samosas just take a little bit longer in terms of timing. Um, and when you put it into warm water, um, it will soften very quickly. So I, it's literally a matter of dunking it for a, a sort of six seconds and then pop it onto your table and, and slice it down the middle. So two halves. And in terms of the filling, I like to be quite sort of generous with my filling. So I'll put sort of a um, couple of good size spoonfuls, spoonful and, and then I demonstrate this in, in, um, in my recipe video as well. So it's a little bit, I'll see, hopefully you can see. But so a matter of just putting it into a, patting it into a triangle shape and then allowing enough room around the perimeter so you can stick the edges together and you, you fold it over once and adjusting the shape as you go. And then one more time. The last bit is a matter of just sealing it off and bring the, the corner pieces together so you're, you're left with a lovely shape like that. That's a perfect triangle. Thank you. The great you've thing with rice I think paper. you've done this before. Yes. <laughs> you have a very, I love your accent. You have a very calm, soothing voice. Oh, thank you so much. Very easy to listen to. Uh, I have, I've made a, a few of these and I think, um, th so the, the mix actually makes about 30. So um, once you start and you get into a rhythm of it, you can easily just keep going and, and you can freeze them as well. Would you freeze them I, before you cook them or after you cook them? I freeze them after I've, after I've cooked them, but um, I'd sort of cook them part way through maybe rather than the 25 minutes until they're very crispy, maybe about sort of 10 minutes. Um, and then, yeah, with, it, with all the crumb coating as well, and then freeze it. I, I did that for my, my daughter's birthday, actually. She uh, had made quite a few of those, and it, it does make it a lot easier when, if you've got a you know, function on um, or gathering on a day, you can just pull them out, pop them into the oven, um, allow them to reheat and crispen up. And so the last thing we need to do while uh, it's still a bit moist on the outside is just pop them into our cornflake crumb. So these, these cornflakes are gluten-free, of course. I didn't realize until um, I was looking in, into recipes that not all cornflakes are gluten-free. Which is uh, weird because cornflakes are corn. Exactly. exactly. Corn, is, corn is inherently gluten-free. Exactly right. And uh, it, it is very, very odd that that's the case. And in fact, rice bubbles. So I don't know whether rice bubbles are a, sort of a common um, cereal in the States, but we have it here. And it's literally just rice, puffed rice. And that, that is sometimes not gluten-free. In fact, often it's not gluten-free. So you have to make a point to, um, to seek out gluten-free cereals that you probably expect to be gluten-free. I bet so you could crisp make, them up in the air fryer. That would be perfect. Yes, definitely. Have you come um, down this way to Melbourne before? I've never been really hardly any countries, Mexico and Japan. That's it. Not for a long wow. time. Yeah, it's... Um, like definitely it's a wonderful place to visit. And I think um, here when, uh, when all, oh my goodness, here's, here's my little one. Do you want to say hi? <laughs> Is that okay? Oh, please. we love having kids and pets on the show. Are you kidding? <laughs> okay, hi. this is Alia. Alia. I just got my headphones, so I can't hear. You won't be able to hear Chef AJ without. Hi. How are Hi. you? I hear, I hear you're going to have your own YouTube channel pretty soon. 
You're going to make your own videos. Whoopsie daisy. <laughs> Whoopsie daisy. Okay. Are you going to have your own YouTube channel one day? Yes. And what are you going to make on that? Maybe some, some potato sandwiches. <laughs> that sounds delicious. I hear your brother was born on your birthday. Yes. That's a pretty good present. <laughs> Definitely. What's your, what's, your favorite, what's your favorite food to eat? Saucy sandwiches. What kind of sandwiches? Saucy sandwiches. What, what is that? Saucy sandwiches. What does it look like, Baba? It's a sushi sandwich. Oh, sushi <laughs> sandwich. I thought you said smoothie sandwich, and I'm like, how the heck do you get a smoothie in a sandwich? That sounds delicious, sushi, sa sushi sandwich. <laughs> oh, well, why did you open the door? <laughs> I opened the door to let some fresh air in. <laughs> but thank you, Alia. Nice Thank to you meet you, up. cutie. All right, she said sushi she sandwich. <laughs> so I'm guessing, this a, nice to meet you. I'm guessing a sushi, a, I can't even say it, a sushi sandwich is a sandwich using nori instead of bread, maybe? That's right. We, we actually just had that, for, we had that for dinner last night. And um, we had some, uh, it's, it's a, uh, certainly much easier than making the, the individual sushi rolls but it's we had um, roast pepper and we had some tofu in the center as well and some some greens and I yeah she loved it that was the first time we made we've made sushi often but the first time we made sushi sandwiches and she was uh just she had she had uh quite a lot she was really enjoying herself and she said to me I've been dreaming about this and this is amazing. This is fantastic. So um, when, when you get that sort of feedback, it's always a good thing. That's so adorable. <laughs> sushi yeah, sandwich. Uh, I love it. Sushi sandwich. Yes, that's the one. So cute. When you're putting the crumbs on as well it's uh, try and dust off the excess um, or else you will find that it kind of it falls everywhere and especially in the oven as well but I found that um, these uh, crumbs compared to now I've experimented with sort of different flours as well in the beginning but um, cornflakes because they they've already got sort of a toasted color and um, a, a nice golden color and uh, are of course toasted as uh, before they just give that lovely crunch uh, and and but of course if you if you don't like or um, have an allergy to corn you could try some other uh, perhaps some um, roasted rice or some crispy rice that would work as well do you ever do you ever cook with millet i have and i love it i've yeah. uh, really enjoyed uh, millet porridge Yep. So, um, with sort of fine, fine uh, pieces and uh, millet flakes as well. How, how do you like your millet? I like it just just like as a grain, like like if you're eating something that would normally go with rice, just with millet is so good. Or cold in a salad, it's oh, good. Yeah. It's kind of kind of nutty. Do you know the vegan doctor in in Australia, Dr. Malcolm McKay? I have, yes, I'm familiar with his work. Yes. Yeah. He's, is he a fan of millet as well? Well, I don't know. I've had him on the show, but I, he is plant-based and he's in Australia. So that's, you've got one at yes. least. That's right. Yeah. Um, I think my, my husband, so you met Shukul just before the show. He's, uh, uh, so he's a plant-based um, nutritionist. So he's, I met with a lot of the the um, the doctors and and um, uh, nutritionists, plant based nutritionists in in the 
area in, in Australia as well. So he's he's met Malcolm. So that's, uh, and Malcolm and Jenny, they're, they're fantastic. And uh, he's often talked about their work as well. I'm just making some smaller, smaller ones. They're a little bit more fiddly and you, of course you don't need quite as much filling. David says he loves your YouTube channel, especially seeing your daughter fighting for strawberries in the supermarket, and he hopes you continue to do more videos. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Guys, those of you that are watching on Facebook keep asking for the recipe. It's been posted, but you can't see anything on Facebook. All the action takes place on YouTube, the chat, the recipes, the links. So please hop over to YouTube if you want to see everything. And here's a smaller version sort of a cocktail samosa type size and just they need an even bigger course. size than the one you made the first one they need like an even bigger one like oh family. yeah yeah that would be cool that would be um, very cool brenda's asking are you going to bake them or air fry them i am going to bake them uh, you could certainly air fry them uh, so when you're baking about 180 degrees Celsius, so 355 degrees Fahrenheit, I believe, roughly around that. And just about so 25 minutes does the trick. So just, in, uh, just until they become nice and crispy. And if you like it extra crispy, you can, of course, do it for a bit longer than that. But, uh, and I think certainly reheating in an air fryer is ideal because uh, you, with, with even your standard samosa, uh, after it cools down, it does become softer and it's about the sort of the crisp factor really, the outside. So uh, definitely give it, a, um, give it a nice toast before you eat it again. The rice papers, I've seen them in, they come in brown and white, don't they? I've seen okay. the rice papers in both colors. Yes, and, and in fact, I was uh, trying to, to source some uh, brown rice paper, and, and that's a really good solution as well if you're looking for kind of a more, more whole foods option. Uh, and I have had um, I used them for other recipes in the past, and, and they're really good. I think they've just got a slightly nuttier flavor, and which works would work really well in this situation as well, in this recipe as well. Um, but yeah, I think probably in, in Australia, I'm, I'm thinking uh, your best option would be to sort of order online. Um, the, the health food stores that are local, they have a good range of a number of things, but perhaps uh, don't stock the brown rice paper. And I wonder whether you could perhaps even get red rice paper because uh, there are so many different varieties of rice, isn't there? That's true. Black rice even. Yes, that's right. Yeah, I love rice. I don't like it when these plant-based doctors start telling people not to eat rice because of the arsenic. I love mm. rice. I love rice as well. I think I would be devastated if that was yeah. something that uh, I had to get uh, eliminate from my diet. I think yeah. bread was okay, but rice, uh, no way. I well, have... Especially like when, like I have, I have just some residual tummy problems, not very often, but like rice is the most, even though I love potatoes, rice is always soothing to my gut. I just love the way it feels. I agree. And, and I'm one, I'm not ashamed to say I eat white rice. I love it. I don't eat it every day, but maybe three times a week I eat basmati rice because it's delicious. Yes. It's very fragrant. And, uh, I, I've, uh, I do alternate myself, um, and, and do have some white rice too. And it just, it's the fragrance of it. It has a different flavor profile and it works like basmati, basmati rice with Indian food is just, it's just a match made in heaven. Um, I, we've tried other rices and it's just, it's just not quite the same. And uh, even when you're making um, biryanis, I've, I've tried biryani with um, different types of rice, but it just doesn't quite taste the same. Yeah. I saw, and the first time I, I had a show on Sunday, she's actually Japanese, the guest, but she used a, a food mill. And have you ever seen that? Like she put her rice in it and she just went like that and it made like a porridge. Oh, wow. So it's kind of just like a rice cooker that 
Um, well, no, it's, it's a tool that after something's oh. cooked, it's, it's called a food mill. I, I've never seen it. It's metal and it has this crank. And she put what she made. She actually made millet, but you could use it for rice. And she turned the crank and it, it made it, and it kept the fiber in, but it kind of like liquefied it. It was kind of interesting. Yeah. I mean, the same set of things, it would be, yeah, really, it was really quite like a really great idea. Yeah. I thought it was kind of, you know, especially because people maybe they have jaw or teeth problems. Like, you know, I don't know. I thought it was kind of cool. I don't know if I'll get one, but I like to know that it existed. Definitely. I think that's, yeah, very interesting. Yeah. I, I've tried using those papers. I tear, I'm just not good at that. It's too much like arts and crafts, you know? <laughs> it, it, there is a lot of tearing that happens and, um, even when uh, I would suggest that if people are making the recipe, there are ones that you're going to certainly throw away. And there's, there's sort of half pieces in the, in the packet as well. But um, I, I find that if I allow it to kind of soak in, the water to soak in just a few more seconds too long, then, then it's going to certainly tear. But um, it is, it's really fiddly. Um, in fact, I, when, I, when I was experimenting with this, this recipe, I almost of gave up because I thought oh goodness how am I ever going to wrap anything in this it just keeps keeps kind of getting away from me but it's it is definitely about that timing or like egg rolls those are yeah kind of wrapped and that's, food. yeah that's actually how um I thought uh to create this recipe, I, I made um, spring rolls or uh, egg rolls um, a couple of years ago. And so made the filling, wrapped it with rice paper and I baked it. And it was very popular. And uh, in, in our family, in our house, um, and as well in, in terms of some of the, one of the videos that I created. And, uh, and then I thought, well, what, what else can you wrap in rice paper? So I tried this one as well. And uh, what I've seen actually on Instagram recently is that someone made um, like a dumpling, a seared dumpling using rice paper as well. Uh, so there's a lot of uses for it. And I think there's, you can make, um, uh, some people make quesadillas and, and um, sort of chips as well. So baked chips with, with rice paper. So it's, it's quite a versatile ingredient. What's your most popular recipe? on your blog or your YouTube channel? That's a good question. I would say probably that one, the rice paper, um, not the rice paper rolls, the spring rolls rather. Um, that's that's very popular. And actually uh, dal is my other, my dal recipe. So I created, um, I made a chana dal recipe and um, created three different types of dal. So I watched that video, all, that was beautiful. Three different ones. Yes, yeah, so that's that's been quite popular as well. Uh, humble dish that is uh, brings back so many memories, but it's it's very nice that that was well received as well. Um, you think you'll write a book someday? I think I would. I think I'd like to. Yeah, I I, I do enjoy writing, and when I get the opportunity, I'm through writing through reflections and and. Um, you know um things in relation to the kids as well but lots of recipes because recipes have such a strong connection with your life experiences and also family heritage uh, so i think even even for for the sake of um my kids to to look back on when they're older i'd love for them to to kind of understand the origins of certain recipes because they're so uh so unique i think like Fiji Indian cuisine is, is, um, has its kind of own identity, really. Uh, it's, there's, of course, a lot of spices that we, we use that are um, Indian spices. But some of the ingredients are, are quite, catch what you wouldn't find in sort of Indian cuisine. So we, Fiji Indian food is sort of a, a marriage between Indian culture and, and the sort of the native Fijian culture as well. So you might... Having having um, you know taro in, in a curry that's that's quite a common um, ingredient and cassava as well. Yeah, and cassava is good. Mm -hmm. Yes, cassava is is actually one of my favorite ingredients. Um, 
uh, and and things to eat actually. So I I just with cassava, I'd often just steam it or boil it and and just have it on its own. It's um, if I could, I, I would have it um, all the time. It's it's kind of it's tricky to find here. Um, but yeah, I think definitely would love to to tell stories and 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 uh, write about recipes. Yes. So I suppose really watch the space. <laughs> Question from Widwana: Do you have an alternative dal puri recipe? All three. I don't. Uh, I've not, in terms of booty, I've not made, um, uh, I've, I've actually, I do have a, a, a brown rice or rather a red rice roti that I make. And certainly you could use that that mix or that dough to make your own sort of smaller versions and, and make, uh, make booties and, and maybe an air fryer. But yeah, I think... You can definitely uh, create something using perhaps some of the the recipes, but I've no, I've not not actually created that recipe. But that's a good one to think about, and and I might might investigate that that more and and look to create it. Sounds good. What are some traditional Indian desserts? Traditional Indian desserts. Uh, we, I, I personally. I'm a fan of halwa. So halwa is, it's typically made with semolina. You could use another grain as well. So uh, perhaps even like millet, I've, I've made it with millet before. And with, with cardamom and sugar and a nut-based milk, it's quite simple. And uh, you could, it's just a matter of kind of toasting the, the grain and adding your spices. And then creating what the texture is kind of like a, how would I describe it? Almost like a cookie dough type texture and you, something that you could scoop. Um, and and that's, that's something that I personally like. I am not really a fan of really sickly sweet desserts. I could never really cope with that. And I know that uh, there are um, lots of wonderful recipes that are quite quite uh, decadent and sweet, but I've I've not uh, kind of ventured too much on that side. I, I know that um, Chef AJ, you were a, a pastry chef for a number of years, and I'd I'd need to get your your guidance and and uh, around sweets and uh, but I'm that's not my strongest suit. I'm just, I'm kind of working on that. What's what's your favorite uh, dessert? To make? You know, oh boy, that's tough. I try. I really don't eat them very often because you know, if I'm eating dessert, then I'm not eating something that's healthier. You know what I mean? And so, I, really, something with fruit. You know, it doesn't have to be just plain fruit, but fruit should be, in my opinion, part of it. You know what I mean? Brilliant. Yes, I love fruit, so that works for me. Uh, so, <laughs> what, what's your favorite fruit? Oh boy, it depends on the season. Oh, gosh. You know, right now it's strawberries right now, when, but then when they start not being sweet, then I'm going to go to what next, then I'll go to the envy apple, you know, it's seasonal. I mean, the, the summer, of course, watermelon, but my favorite fruit is whatever's the ripest at the time. You know what I mean? Cherries, uh, you know, it's, it's whatever I mean. I mean, you can't go wrong with fruit unless it's bad fruit. That's right? true. And, and I completely agree with the seasonal fruit. Uh, sometimes, you know, we, we will crave mangoes in the off season and say, oh, you know, we'll, we try and source it and, and off-season mango tastes pretty ordinary. It just doesn't have the sweetness and the flavor. So, um, but yeah, and in-season fruits are, are sensational. And, and we're, we're lucky enough at the moment, Chef AJ, to have uh, watermelon, as I said before, and um, it's just oh. so refreshing. Okay, I think I thought my favorite fruit. You know, it's easier to answer what my least favorite fruit is, which unfortunately is grapefruit. I don't hate it, but it's not like... You know, if I'm eating my last meal on earth, I'm not picking grapefruit, just so you know. <laughs> and I'm not picking celery and I'm not picking buckwheat. Those are like the three things oh. that like, eh, not my favorite. But I, I, I will, no, my favorite fruit is called the sugar kiss melon. 
it's a form. Okay, so it's like a cantaloupe, but you know how cantaloupes, they're sometimes good, they're sometimes not. This is a guaranteed sweet cantaloupe that's unlike any other. And wow. they just started selling them at Costco. Before that, you could only get them in this really uh, kind of shishi market called Gelson's, but it's called the Sugar Kiss Melon. So if I have oh, wow. to make, if I have to go on record, I'm going to say that's my favorite fruit. Sugar Kiss Melon, I've got to try that out. Yeah. It's, 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 where is that kind of native to? Good question. I mean, it's it's easy to get in California, but man, it's it, and it was so great about like Gelson's. Like they'll give you a sample of the produce so that you can try before you buy, and it's Perfect. it's just remarkable. And so, and I'll eat the whole melon. Like if I get a sugar kiss, I'm eating the whole thing. It's that good. So mm. I, I'm going to vote for it. If you guys haven't tried sugar kiss, I think the season might be almost over, but they're incredible. Very you know, nice. I tried a sapote, a meme sapote for the first time. And that was interesting because it was uh, unfortunately spoiled. So only half of it was good, but that mm. tasted like eating, you know, pumpkin pie. That was really interesting fruit. Oh, very nice. And, and do you like dragon fruit yourself? What kind of fruit? Uh, um, uh, it's, it's called dragon fruit, but I think. Oh, dragon fruit, the beautiful pink is beautiful. Yes, I never, no, yes. it's funny. <laughs> I've never had it fresh, but I've had it frozen, like into ice cream. It's 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 such a beautiful color. It's yeah, it's lovely and vibrant. We we um, it's uh, we we really started eating it for the for the color, and the kids absolutely love that kind of bright pink pink color. That uh, it's amazing that it, you know those sorts of colors exist in nature, uh, but they are absolutely lovely and and really quite a neutral flavor when you're having it on its own. But then it's nice to sort of mix it into other things um, and it has the smoothie bowls and smoothies as well. We actually um, lived in Thailand for, for uh, four months uh, when, when Alia was uh, just over a year old. And Thailand is just the, the mecca of, of delicious fruit and you get a variety of fruits all year round and and. When you've had, and I would imagine in, in California would be very similar. In fact, my, my husband went to California and he said he'd never tasted a, a blackberry that was sweet before until he went to, to California uh, on a sort of in the last couple of years. And it said, yeah, it was a, blackberries can be sweet. Um, but uh, and when we went to Thailand, it was, it was lovely to have that wonderful range of, of fruits and uh, the pineapple is something else, and uh, the coconuts oh, as well. They're, they're pretty, pretty spectacular. So it, it's good to know that in terms of your dessert options, yeah. um, that fruit is the way to go. I, I try to. It doesn't mean that I don't eat other things, but I mean, I always think if I'm eating something else, I'll eat it with a lot of fruit, if you know what I'm saying. So if I'm eating like a, an ice cream or an ice cream made with fruit, I, I'll always, or even if it's like I make like these cookies called snickerdoodles out of dates and oats, I always make sure that there's an equal or greater amount of fruit with the dessert. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Perfect. So I try not to just eat a candy cake or cookie. I try to eat like a lot of fresh whole fruit and then a smaller portion of whatever the, the dessert is. That's it's just it's calorie density. It's just kind of like the way I'm trained. It's just like when I eat starch, I eat a lot of it, but I eat a lot of veggies with it. So mm -hmm. that's kind of how I, I roll, you know. Yeah, and I think definitely the um, something about having fruit with a dessert just makes it a lot more enjoyable. It kind of just balances out the flavors a little bit. And uh, I, yeah, I, I agree. I think um, I had uh, a, a beautiful cake recently and I just, I was craving oranges. So I sliced up some oranges and squeezed some orange juice on top and it just made it uh, just, just so much more enjoy enjoyable and just fresh and punchy full of flavor. So I think that's, uh, that's, I had something that I never had before. And, oh my God, I got to be careful with this because it's like crack candy. They had it at Costco. <laughs> it was organic dried pears. You know, you know, I've had like dried apricots and, you know, dates and raisins and even dried mango, dried pineapple. And I never had a dried pear. Whoa, that's intense. Oh, wow. It's really like eating candy. They're so good. <laughs> it is candy, oh, basically. It, yeah. Wow, I've never tried yeah. that. I've got to try yeah. that. Is, yeah, is the texture 
um, what is the texture like? When it's, it's soft. It's, 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 it's not, it's actually, it's, it's soft like a medjool date, at least the ones I got. They, oh. It wasn't hard to chew like sometimes dried pineapple can be. This was very easy. Yeah. To, it was very supple. Oh, sounds fantastic. Yes, because apple, when it, it's dehydrated, almost uh, becomes a little bouncy, doesn't it? A bit gummy. Yeah, yeah no, this, was, this, was, this went down smooth, so... Oh. Yeah, I oh, forgot that nice. I bought them because I was actually at Costco and I was starving and there was nothing to eat. So I bought that and I opened it up and then I put it in the back of the cabinet. I found it the other day. I'm like, ooh, good thing these were in the back of the cabinet. <laughs> have oh, you ever had dur- have you ever had durian? Oh my goodness. Durian is uh, the, the thing that I, I crave most during my pregnancy. But also it's one of those fruits that you, you try initially and you think, okay, um, I, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily hit you straight away. I, and I, of course, it depends on the variety you have, I think, as well. But yeah, I tried it in, in Thailand properly and it was, I enjoyed it. But then I, now I'm absolutely obsessed with it. We have, um, there's uh, a variety that's um, most popular in, in Malaysia, I think. And we get it from our local Asian food store. And it's like creamy custard that's sort of burnt caramel it's amazing and I could have that every day it's just it's fantastic and and Alia she will insist on having durian she's a complete durian baby she would have it for every single meal it's it's pretty pretty spectacular well I yeah I I really enjoy it Do, do you enjoy it yourself I think I only had it once a long time ago at culinary school is that the one that kind of has a bad smell does have a bit of a funky smell so maybe maybe i didn't love it i don't remember but i do like jackfruit fresh jackfruit wow fresh jackfruit is sensational definitely Um, in fact it does i i only ever had jackfruit um in a green form um in in terms of fiji there's uh there's there's a wonderful jackfruit curry that you see at most indian functions but it's it's made with green jackfruit. So I I was not introduced to to sweet the the ripened jackfruit until I I met my husband and and he's obsessed with it as well. So yeah, a good jackfruit is is pretty amazing. A bit tricky to get into because it's, it's so sticky and you you need to have some quite special skills to crack it open and and get everything out. But uh, it's, it's literally like it's like you you can you can glue your hands together. It's so sticky. <laughs> it is amazing. Yeah, and you think about the the first person who would have come across it, they would have had to work very hard to, to try and try and see what was inside. They were very determined, but it was definitely worth the, the effort when they did. <laughs> and um, I, I think the same with durian as well. It's, it's pretty, um, pretty lethal uh, exterior. And I, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't have ever thought if I came across that on, on the side of the street to, to try and see what's inside, because it's just so, um, so spiky <laughs> but um, really it's it's um, what's inside is amazing do you have any of the finished uh, samosas i do oh yeah just pop them out of the oven i'm so happy you get to see the finished <laughs> product have any of you ever made samosas i don't think i have when you eat them, they're so good. You say, may I have some more, sir? Get it? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I get it. That is the, the finished product. A little bit of coriander at the top. Nice and crispy. Wanted to actually try and see if you can perhaps hear the, the crisp. Oh, my God. That looks That's amazing. Picking it up. <laughs> One of the viewer, viewers named Apple said she had to make 600 for a friend's wedding. Oh, my goodness. That's that a lot of work. Do you think you could come even closer to the camera to show them? Is it possible? Oh, of course. Yeah. Just because just they're so pretty. Sure. So the inside. Almost like an Indian Pop Tart. <laughs> they are. 
<laughs> they are. In fact, you could probably, if you if you like sweets, you'd fill it with something sweet as well. <laughs> yeah. It's just but, so incredibly how how creative all you wonderful chefs are with oil-free cooking. I mean, I don't know why anyone would use oil when they don't have to. Absolutely. And I I hundred percent agree. And I think if I, I hadn't tried it myself, I I would be I would feel like th that oil was necessary because we're just so used to using oil. And I think it's almost like a default where you when you think, okay, the first thing I'm going to do when I create a, um, a curry or a stir fry is put oil in. But in fact, as, as you say in your videos, Chef AJ, all you need is a good pan. It's not about the oil. You, you need to have a good pan. And uh, once, you, once you start, it's, it seems like a, such an alien thing to extra, add an extra ingredient, to add oil to, to something that's, that doesn't add anything to the overall experience of the food. Absolutely. And the thing is, is, especially for people that are trying to eliminate or decrease salt, all oil does is make you use a lot more salt. Absolutely. Yep. Well, this has been so much fun. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure getting to know you and your story and your fabulous recipes. Thank you so much for having me. It's an absolute honor. And uh, thank you for all the amazing work that you do and the inspiration that you give. Oh, that's so kind. Thank you so much, Divya, and to your lovely daughter and family. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when my guest is a plant-based cardiologist, Dr. Heather Shankman, and she's going to talk about plant-based for your heart. See, you're plant-based for your tummy. People can be plant-based for their heart. No bad reason, right? Bye, Divya. Take care. Bye. Thank you, Chef AJ. <gasps> oh, wait, we can't say goodbye. Oh, There's another kid. Okay. There's another one. <laughs> this is Darian. Hi, Darian. This is Chef AJ. Just over there. Can you see her over there? Hi. <laughs> what a cutie. Yeah, it's adorable. Aww. Oh, you got a banana for your breakfast. <laughs> That's funny. He'd rather eat a banana. That's precious. <laughs> Aww. Oh, thanks. Drop his line. Take care. Thanks, guys. Oh, Take care. Thank you.